Welcome to this presentation series on wildlife management principles. Our intent is to explore some of the principles that underlie wildlife management within a northern context and specifically to consider examples that are relevant to people and wildlife in Yukon. In this first presentation we will address the following two questions. What is computer modeling and why is it important to wildlife management? The objective here is to introduce you to the concept of computer models and modeling and to review some examples of how models can be used by wildlife management partners. We think, therefore we model. As human beings, we have the unique ability to think and contemplate about the world around us, whether we are out on the land or working, studying and learning. The basic act of thinking about our world is the essence of modeling. For example, when we think about the world around us, we are often doing one of three things. Constructing mental models or cause and effect relationships. We may be running simulations or what-if scenarios of plausible events in our heads. Or we may be making decisions or planning, which are future-oriented exercises and require our foresight. These mental models not only form the basis of our knowledge and understanding, but we also use them when we communicate with one another. The simple act of sharing stories, experiences, and knowledge are based upon comparing and contrasting mental models. Therefore, models also provide a basis for learning, which can be self-reflective, where we think and reflect independently, or learning can be inspired by other people. Either way, the core of thinking, communicating, and learning is based upon sharing and understanding mental models. Modeling is relevant to wildlife managers because it allows people to collectively use what they know about a certain population or landscape. And oftentimes, modeling helps improve our understanding and learn more about what we may not know. One of the first pictures that comes to mind when we hear the word modeling is that of a runway model showing us the latest in fashion where we can see the latest combination of clothes from many angles and perspectives. The point here is that modeling is often used to help us look at something in a new way and to develop a new way of seeing. Models are often used to imitate real-life objects or processes, such as this model airplane, or they can be used as tools to help us learn, communicate, and improve decision-making. So in the context of northern wildlife and landscapes, rather than a runway model, it should be apparent that wildlife harvesters, hunters, and trappers are also excellent examples of those who model for a living. What I mean by this is that hunters and trappers use and rely on their knowledge or mental models of the land and animals to be successful harvesters and effective teachers. Whether they are out hunting caribou or teaching us how to trap, hunters and trappers have developed reliable and complex mental models of how the natural world works. Thank you for your interest. Please join me in the next video where we will explore the concepts of population dynamics that form the basis for wildlife management principles and approaches.